Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a mid-session update for Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. Uh, I'm going to start this video out with a brief update on the broad markets and then roll into uh, some of the recently highlighted trade ideas, give you updates there, and also um, uh, maybe a few new trade ideas. Uh, like most of the recent videos, this one will be relatively brief. Um, there's not a lot uh, new to report on the markets. And um, the number of uh, objective trade ops right now, trading opportunities, uh, are, are, are pretty slim. I'm just not seeing a lot out there with compelling setups. But uh, there are, with that being said, there's still some, so we'll, we'll get to those here. All right, now this is uh, from time to time I've uh, in recent months talked about some of the sentiment indicators that I use, uh, uh, quite a few of which are at extremes that um, usually come at market inflection points. Now those extremes can be bullish or bearish extremes. When you're using sentiment indicators, they are contrary indicators, meaning uh, when they hit extreme bearish readings, that is bullish. That's when you typically want to be closing shorts or getting long. And then vice versa, when you have extreme bullishness, one-sided, that's when you want to start uh, looking for sell signals in the market and shorting opportunities. And then anything, I always say this, anything in between is really noise on those indicators. It's just, I, I find over the years, little if any predictive value. So what we're looking at here, and this is a little spin on the chart. I've showed you quite often the CPC, which is the total put to call ratio, and then the CPCE, which is the put to call uh, equity only put to call ratio. So this put to call ratio measures put versus call buying on stocks. And if you're unfamiliar, uh, when you buy a call, you are bullish on a stock, you're betting it's going to go up. Uh, that gives you the right to buy that stock at a predetermined price in, at some point in the future, whereas a put is a bearish call on the stock. Now, it can go other ways. Sometimes institutions will sell puts or individuals will or sell a call. But to keep it simple, what you're looking at right here, 1.0 means would mean when you're at that level that for every call being sold in the market, there's one put being sold. And that's parity. Now that's unusual, and that is because stocks tend to go up the majority of the time, and uh, so usually you're going to see a low a put to call ratio that's well below uh, 1.0. When you hit those spikes, that's usually during market bottoms or corrections like that right there, like this spike right here. Uh, you can see where those spikes come. Now, this one's a little different. I usually show you the daily chart. This is a weekly chart. And what I've, my takeaway on this chart is not so much the level, but I like to uh, use this 100 day, ex, or a simple 100 day moving average. And uh, that's right here, MA100. It's this blue line. And what that does, it smooths out the ups and downs because you have sometimes corrections in the market and spikes, as you can see here. And those in themselves sometimes can be effective uh, signals. Like I said, when you, oops, right here, when you hit extremes, you had a bottom. When you hit extremes, you had a bottom. But other than that, you know, the stock market, you know, it's a it's a collection of all the, the activity out there, all the trades by every uh, participant in the market at any point in time, institutions, individuals. And so I like to use these moving averages. They smooth out the bumps. And as you can see here, when that blue line hit the extreme, what I did is uh, I put these dotted lines. I think you can make these out, hopefully if in the video. And if not, I'm just putting, I'm just covering over these dotted lines. Uh, and I'm going to give you an arrow. And where I place those dotted lines are on over the past, uh, we're going back decades here. This goes back to 2003, the beginning of this chart. And so on that, now let me roll up here a little bit. I just realized I might be cutting off part of the screen. Okay, there we go. So on that, you can see one, two, three major market tops, including the last bear market, the, pre, the bear market from 2007 to 2009, which was about a 55% or so drop. Then you had a, about a 22% drop right here in uh, back in 2011 and into early, uh, yeah, no, that was the end of 2011. There's the drop right there. Then this drop here was about 16%. And that was the, uh, what I call a deer market. Neither bull nor bear market went sideways for about a, a year and a half, almost two years. And within it was a you know a drop of 15 and, and over 20% in many indexes. So again, the point is, these are some of the biggest drops. And when you look at the, the line right here, the 100 day moving average, 
uh, you can see that it right before that drop up until this point it was at this extreme level right here uh, and that is just over the 0 0.60 ratio so in other words uh, more a lot more call buying than put buying was low we hit it right there just before that drop that 22 percent drop hit it here and not only we hit it we hit it back here but we've crossed now well below it so this is actually unprecedented at least going back as far as this data populates i had to stop this back in 03 so just wanted to mention and that okay what is that is that a hard sell signal absolutely not why because what happens uh, sentiment just like overbought and oversold can become more extreme or again it's a, it's a just showing you conditions at the time in other words we hit that line I don't know again if you can make it out in the video we I'll show you that moving average hit that line right there that 0.60 or 0.62 level right there stayed on it for many months so you know you shorted here uh, you would have had to ride this out and that was about that looks almost a year in time now here was a lot shorter it was only a couple months so it was pretty fairly accurate if you want to call it a timing indicator but again that's not what I'm calling it and that's not how I use it here we hit it there again you might have got in early but you didn't really go underwater much you went sideways slightly higher it looked like a few months remember here's the scaling so you can see you know January 15 April June October and uh, the end of the year so that's it and we hit it there and uh, we're still we'll, we're well below it that again speaks to what's going on uh, in the market right now with uh, complacency and uh, you know what market participants are thinking overall and here's another one I like to share from time to time and see AAII bull to bear ratio um, AAII that's the American Association of Individual Investors they send out a weekly survey to all their participants uh, asking if uh, what their expectations on the market are they bullish are they bearish and again I think there is n less than zero predictive value in this unless you hold off and wait till you hit extreme so I boxed in uh, and again I've shared this one many times over the years my extreme level runs from in this red I call it a red zone about 30 to 45 and again you're looking at the um, the red zone shows the extreme readings of the spread between bullish versus bearish market participants as per that survey so when you have a lot more bulls and you can see them down here there was a period of extreme there was a couple periods we hit the red line and you can see what followed and again these were the biggest corrections and bear markets that we've had going back for you know over a decade now and the last time we had it was right here and that was back in 2018 and uh, you can see what happened there you went uh, we had a big correction and an even big bigger one in the fall right there and uh, that was a period where the market went sideways to to substantially lower uh, we didn't get there before COVID we're high but not that high but we are here and these are what I call a cluster sometimes you get these one and done readings and sometimes you get clusters these uh, readings in close proximity uh, and again I always point out that sometimes you can get some false readings and you want to look at where they come to you know if the readings come right on the heels of a big correction then it's usually uh, you've already washed out that bullish excess in the market so I just wanted to point that out and I have pointed these out recently and nothing's changed we've just gotten uh, more extreme higher into the red zone uh, in uh, more more recently and so that's that and then likewise you know I'm not always looking for tops bottoms work just as well there's the green zone down below and that's when you want to buy uh, that was their first trigger first buy signal since this one back here and look what happened if you stepped in and bought on those two buy signals so that was it and there was just an, an additional buy after that uh, we had one right here marked the bottom of that uh, nearly two-year bear market right there a sideways market and so forth and so on there was the end of the 2000 and uh, 7 to 2009 bear market came with that extreme spike uh, so pretty pretty good stuff guys and um, again unfortunately not a timing indicator because sometimes you get boom 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 and, uh, and you also have to recognize what 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 cycle in the market you're in, in a bear market you're gonna get some extreme readings and in a bull market you're gonna get some ex uh, extreme and persistent bullish readings so therefore 
when we roll into what I'm about to now, you look at the charts and you wait for the charts to tell you when, when it's time. Now, uh, I have talked about uh, some recent sell signals that we had on the daily charts, and those are still intact. We're still below those primary trend lines on the daily charts of SPY and QQQ and IWM. But what we need to see happen, and uh, this is what I've been talking about for the last mm, over a week now, we're in this trading range. This is NQ, NASDAQ 100 futures, 60-minute chart going back a couple months and uh, you know we put in a divergent high there we had a correction uh, we put in a divergent low we rallied and we recently put in a divergent high uh, we even had this trend line break you know uh, on NQ uh, SPY and QQQ or I should say SPY and IWM broke down as well uh, this uh, S&P 500 and the small caps but what happened is uh, we never had a confirming sell signal in NQ, the NASDAQ 100. We went below trend, but we only moved sideways. We haven't seen any impulsive drop. But we did set up this trading range, and and I continue to maintain that, that chances are the next uh, tradable trend will be determined by which way this breaks. Bulls want to see an upside break. Bears want to see a downside break. Uh, you know, the charts indicate a downside break based on the divergence and everything else. And uh, we just need to get that. And then you're going to need to see right now the charts on the S&P 500 just aren't as clear. It's closer to new highs. And uh, the same thing I've been saying for weeks, but I'll just update that in case you're catching up now. We need to see a couple sectors break down, primarily the financials right here. XLF has a beautiful uptrend line right here uh, that it has been defending like a world champ, uh, holding that trend line, but hugging it. Um, we need to see that break, a solid break below there. Uh, that'll send the financials down, which will most likely put pressure on the broad market. And another one that I'd uh, really like to see break down to help confirm the recent sell signals or breakdown on the uh, daily charts, the SPY, QQQ, and IWM is XLI, the industrial. Same thing, a beautiful trend line. This one goes back to the March lows from 2020 uh, after the pandemic first hit. And we've had numerous defenses, successful defenses of that level uh, recently. So um, that's kind of bigger picture stuff. And uh, if and when we get those breakdowns, then I'll, I'll certainly do an update. Okay, so the markets are slogging around sideways, not doing much. Let's go to where the opportunities are. I'll do quick updates on the commodities. Um, and, and again, I've, you know, if you're catching up, uh, I've... I don't want to say to say cool down on my longer term bullish outlook for commodities. That's not accurate. Just near term, intermediate term, um, you know, said that these things might need to correct. And, and they have quite a few have corrected. Um, but then uh, I've also recently, more recently gotten bullish on select commodities. And I'm starting out here with the grains. Um, your grains are soybeans, corn and wheat. Those are your three main grains. Uh, trade. You can trade them via ETNs or futures. These are the futures. This was ZS. And just yesterday I did an update, so I won't spend a lot of time. ZS hit my final near-term target. I listed two targets, 1553 and 1575, with an objective long entry off the support zone and a breakout and a back test. And then we put in that divergent high, uh, as mentioned yesterday. And so far, uh, inching lower there. Let me make sure that chart's up to date. Yeah, that is. That's still trading. Okay. So not 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 much to update there. But again, that was, for me, more of a hit and run trade. And I'll kind of just regroup, stand out, stand aside right now, and wait for the next objective op. Uh, and then the other ones I mentioned were uh, wheat and corn. And then corn, uh, like, like wheat, put in a divergent low recently. And like soybeans, of course. You know, like I said, they tend to move together birds of a feather flock together uh, and that was after this divergent high and there was a correction that was again needed a lot of these commodities kind of got ahead of themselves a little bit and then most recently we put in this minor uptrend line divergent high and uh, on the 60 minute chart and that just we just broke down that's brought corn back to that uh, that's a pretty important support level Normally, you look at that rising wedge, you'd say there more, there's more downside, and there may be. Uh, my near-term convictions aren't strong. I'm just doing an update because I've been highlighting this recently. I'm going to give you one more level in case we go a little lower. Uh, my preference is to stand aside right now, but uh, that is support. And th this is in a bullish uh, primary uptrend. So the buyers could step in here, and if you're looking where to go long, being that it's the first leg down on that wedge breakdown, 
Uh, probably get another leg down, but I do have to point out the fact we're at support and maybe that's it, 667. Uh, but again, I'll continue to update these and um, just wanted to mention that, you know, most of the bulk of the, the bounce I was looking for and then some. Uh, the one I mentioned in lieu of corn uh, originally as a setup was uh, wheat. Let me find that. That's CW. And wheat and corn really tend to move almost in lockstep. Uh, and that was the uh, setup right here in wheat. And highlighted as a breakout, uh, a lot objective long entry on the breakout of the trend line, which we got. We moved up. But we also set up this little small divergent high recently and then broke this minor, minor uptrend line. And uh, like corn, it's pulling back to support level 680. Six, I'm sorry, 678, 330 was my one, two second target. We exceeded that, fell a little shy. These, that was a potential target, and it still is a potential target. And that's why I'm doing this update. Uh, I think there's a decent chance we could get another run up there. But and if you're an active trader, that's that's where we'll probably get a reaction on that. It's a pretty significant level. Um, but it's possible the the bounce is over. It's certainly we've certainly met more than the measured target for this wedge. I'll continue to update, but these are all still potential pullback levels, objective longs. And again, I do these videos because some people are long term traders looking to position long or you know where to use stop loss orders on their trades. Others are active traders. They want to game the zigs and zags, rips and dips. And so as long as there's movement and things that I see in the charts, you know, clear developments, uh, then I'll, I'll post those updates. Uh, let's move on to, I'm going to do a quick update on gold and the dollar. You know, gold, again, I'm still longer term bullish. Near term, um, concern that the odds are elevated right now for correction. Gold's been kind of stalling out as with silver lately. And I think that's largely due to the uh, U.S. dollar I've mentioned here. We had uh, this downtrend line right there um, that was taken out. Popped the other day. We came in and back tested it, and we're still here. The biggest thing on this chart is a support level right here. Uh, it's not a hard level because we've gone through it there. We've had a couple reactions, but uh, quite a few reactions lately, uh, and that's 89.66. Remember, gold tends to be, it is, it is a dollar-sensitive asset. Uh, tends to move inversely or opposite the direction of the dollar. Um, there are instances or times where uh, even with a rising dollar, gold can still go up uh, if the demand for gold is, is, is overwhelming the impact that a rising dollar has on gold. So sometimes you have that you know strong demand on something and it over, overrides the, uh, the impact a rising dollar has. But with all that being said, you're just, you just you don't want to put the odds in your favor. You want to be able to make a bearish case for the dollar when you're long or bullish gold. And so that's it. We're continue to hold the support I've been highlighting. We're not really going up yet. Last time we broke out, we didn't look back. We rallied after the breakout of this almost identical pattern. Divergent low, downtrend line breakout. We moved up and had a nice rally until this point. We may take off. That's what the charts indicate. But, you know, sometimes... Uh, you have a bullish setup that doesn't pan out, or, and uh, if you break down, especially if you take out those recent lows, that's very bearish, uh, quite bearish when you have divergences if they don't pan out for a decent rally. But I'm still favoring that. And then all that talk, you know, whether you want to trade the dollar, and that's actually my preference because I mentioned it uh, about a week or so ago. I'm not so keen to short gold right now. Uh, as I might normally be because it's in a primary uptrend and it's a pretty strong uptrend and dip buyers have come in. A lot of people finally getting on that gold bandwagon and saying, I want to own gold now. And so therefore, um, you know, you can see that uh, gold's really not going down. It's just moving sideways the last few days. But again, if the dollar start that that bullish setup for the dollar starts to pan out and we move up to uh, some of those uh, price targets that I have there, that will most likely bring gold back down. And I've given, you, I've given you some levels. Right now, the trend line, depending on if and when it moves down there, uh, pull back to about 1877 or so. Uh, that's support, minor support. You have the trend line there. Uh, and uh, even a pullback to 1847. Even though that'll take you below the trend line, that's still good support on gold. And then 1800 is really good support. So these would be objective long uh, entry points 
uh, for a long-term trader or even a swing trader on gold. If and when it gets there, let's see how the charts look. Right now, we still have the negative divergence, so I wouldn't be so keen on buying the pullback to the first uh, support level. Uh, you might want to you know, give it a little, little room there. And um, again, sometimes in a bull run, the divergences get burned through, meaning prices continue higher uh, till you no longer have divergences. But as of now, keep it simple. You just, I, I wouldn't be adding to gold at this point in time. I would hold off and uh, either wait for a pullback or let these divergences burn out, see what the dollar does. And then silver is the same thing. And let me, I'll get to the gold GLD chart in just a second for you. I know a lot of, a lot of you don't trade futures. So let me just pull up silver. Silver, 60 minute chart. You remember silver is going to follow gold for uh, give or take. For the most part and um, you know it's been flirting with this uptrend line on the 60 minute chart put in a divergent high here if it happens to make an equal or slightly higher high anytime soon it will still have divergence so therefore my you know outlook is the same on silver not the most objective time to add and if you're an active trader and you don't mind counter trend trades uh, there may be a short pullback trade here minimum target right there 2680 all right let's look at gld and i'm going to give you a few other trade ideas here uh, gld gold uh, etf uh, you know bigger picture was this was my long-term buy zone here i got bearish on gold because we were at major resistance expecting a correction I uh, laid out this buy zone. We hit it there. We rallied once on the top of the zone, hit it again, but then fell to the bottom of the zone. And you had two opportunities, which again, the top of the zone was only moderate support. Bottom was listed as solid support, a great level, which way back here, I said, if and when it got down to 158, I would most certainly be you know, going back into long-term positions. And that's been that so far. We walked away from it. However, if you look closely, there's a line here. I'll turn the color up had it turned down a little bit. There's some resistance there at about 179.34 is where I have the number. And uh, why? Well, a couple reasons. You have a big old gap back here in GLD. You had a lot of reactions. That was major support after the top. We had a blow off top right there. And then we came down. When we couldn't hold that support, boom, we broke down. Gold tried to back test it, back tested, tried to regain it and did for two days right there. Two days, but it proved to be a false recovery or failed uh, recovery and that's bearish once we dropped down below that was it so we went down we ran up once again tried another run at that high couldn't do it okay so that was the whole that's how the correction panned out is what i'm trying to say but now because that was a battleground before this level as well as all the way up here at about 183.54 uh, that uh, is still significant uh, resistance and so that's it so basically gold has a resistance zone uh, that it's now at uh, or just under from about 179.34 up to about 183.54. And uh, another thing if you might note is the posture of the PPO. Um, PPO is a trend indicator. And uh, when you have the PPO line, which is orange, move down below, cross below the white line, which is called the signal line, then that's, uh, that's called a bearish crossover. And traders will use those as signal momentum or trend changes or yeah, trend change. And you got it there. And look at that. You had a crossover. Here you started trading sideways. And I always caution you of this. I like to see clean separation on these lines when you get these crossovers. When you're in a sideways trading range, these lines start to flatten out. So you get whipsaws in, out, in, out. So ignore crossovers there. You want to see clean separation like you had here. And look at that. You went to cross, but it failed. It never made the crossover. It kept that bearish trend going. Uh, but here you finally had some clean separation. See that in the line? And then boom, bullish crossover right there. And we caught, you know, that was highlighted as a buy right there. And there was a nice trade to be made in gold, it rallied. Uh, but then boom, clean separation, bearish crossover right there. And it, it remained there. Look at it. Look at all these rejections. Just look how well it worked. Rejection, rejection, rejection on each time it tried to cross. Finally made the bullish cross right there, right after the low. And that was your, you know, if you're using this to, again, I don't use these as standalone buy and sell signals. I use it to confirm or refute my analysis, you know, what I'm seeing elsewhere. But <clears throat> the case was made to step in long there and again on that pullback. And look at this, a perfect back test in a successful back test, a foiled cross. You know, the what I'm trying to say here is the signal line 
often acts as support or resistance during trends. So you get these what appear to be uh, uh, potential crossovers, but when you bounce, that's bullish. It keeps the trend intact. But I do want to point out, it's been a while. Let me just take off all those lines and show you what I'm looking at. This was our last signal right here, clean signal, clean separation, bullish crossover. Before that, this was our last clean signal, bearish crossover. And counting out those whipsaws here, uh, bull, oh, and they're bullish. So bearish, bullish, in other words, sell right there, buy right there, sell right there, buy right there, and we're still on that buy signal, but this PPO is now getting a little stretch. You look at the distance between each of these crossovers, we could get a bearish cross now. And if we do, then we might get a little more downside uh, you know, um, uh, in gold than just a mild pullback. And we may bounce. And if we bounce, then just keep an eye, there's overhead resistance. So again, the takeaway is I just said, well, we could do this, we could do that. First of all, let's see what we do. Let's see if we get a clean bearish crossover. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, if not, what happens when we run up here? Uh, how do the charts look? But at the end of the day, you know, this is another reason to just be cautious right now, because if you get the crossover, that could uh, bring in some sellers. And so again, um, near term cautious on gold and silver. That helps. And, you know, if I'm bullish or bearish on gold, unless I state otherwise, I'm going to be also bullish and bearish on GDX. I just view GDX as a proxy for trading gold. You just get more bang for your buck because they're, the miners are effectively a leveraged trade on gold because they tend to go up more when gold's rallying and tend to fall more in percentage terms when gold is correcting. Um, and again, just like gold, it was mentioned here, long term key support was uh, a very objective buying up. And uh, I believe for the next leg up in a, in a bull market in gold and silver. But there may be, you know, corrections. There will be corrections along the way. Okay, a couple trade idea updates. Uh, you know, the Reddit crowd, they're still running that um, AMC. It's going through the moon. Uh, up another 71% today. Uh, took out that 36 level. Remember, 36, I pointed out as resistance, and we stopped that. You know, we, first I pointed out 20 as resistance, and we did. We stopped there for about a day, pulled back, took it out the next day, and that was a breakout. Break above resistance, that opened the door to run up to the next target or resistance, 2580. Uh, and then that opened the door for a run up to the next and last resistance I had at 36, right there, and it stopped cold that day went down consolidate for a day but took it out today and that is bullish that's a breakout 36 was the most significant resistance level on this chart because that was the all-time high in amc um that is and and you had multiple reaction points there so that was a you know technically that's a big breakout now fundamentally if you guys follow this there's absolutely this this company should have been bankrupt 10 times over they've been kept afloat uh, they just did a stock offering sold some of their shares at this you know elevated price um and so there's some fundamental buzz but still the you know they're i, I think their debt is what it was like five they're they're insanely in debt this company's levered this is all reddit um so we took a shot or i did here at a short at 20 50 said give it about you know you know 50 percent downside target with a 15 percent stop that was taken out and at that point then i said look you know these are if it takes that out those are the next targets so there's no resistance this is what i wanted to do on amc if you're in it um there's no saying where it stops you just trail your stops up and be careful taking home a position overnight because when these parabolic moves end this is a parabolic run right that's what that is when you start going up and you go up and increase rate that's a parabolic run when that parabolic run right here stopped at 20 the stock dropped i have to grab over here to measure uh from there and just a matter of about a week or so it dropped 75 percent and of that the big part of it was almost uh, 50 or more percent the following day on a big gap down i don't know if you can see it here you had a close there the green candle at the top then you opened up down here and then dumped right away so what will happen is at some point when the parabolic when the music stops this thing is going to reverse it's going to reverse hard if you're trading it and you have uh, and you're an active trader you can use a, a a stop during the day a stop loss order that will you know cut your losses on a pullback but they're not going to protect you overnight on a gap down stop loss orders will be bypassed a stop lo loss order 
if it's pa uh, triggered on the gap down, it's going to sell you out on whatever price it opens. And if you use a stop limit order that says sell me out, uh, if the stock drops to 45, let's say, but only 45, that's what a stop limit says. Sell me at 45, but no lower. Do not sell me at 4409 or 49.99, or yeah, or, or anything below there. And so what happens on a stop limit order if the stock opens down at let's say 40 it, it keeps dropping you're still in the position only then at that point if it goes back to 45 will the order trigger and again as i said that's a stop limit a stop loss will trigger it wherever this thing opens at the open and um now that's that and we're not like i said there's i don't see any objective entry or reason to be in the amc other than just riding it up um, but the one that I did mention that the Reddit crowd's been pumping as well, uh, these are called meme stocks. Uh, and my last update was uh, pointed this one out just right here a couple weeks back, about a month ago. Uh, it's an objective long entry at eight dollars. In fact, here's the video screenshot from that. That was a swing trade ideas on uh, May 7th, highlighting it as a buy here on that eight dollar support, I'll give or take. Uh, with a target up here that is 22, I said first target would be 960 uh, and an objective long entry or add-on if it takes 960 out for the next target at 20, 1222. Well, they're pumping this just like game stock and it's already exceeded that. So we're up, if you took it there, you hit the 1222 target and almost to the button that day, look at that, you could have got out on Friday. Um, and that was good for so far up to that point and that was my final target there about 50 about a 50 percent return 51 percent but they've taken it out that's resistance and it went up to hit you can see i had this line i think that line was there even in the video it hit the next resistance level i had on my chart right there which is uh from this gap these two lines if you make them i had a gap right here and that's what traders are looking at so uh, and the same story if you took if you took it there on the eight dollar uh, pull back to that eight dollar support uh, and you're up now at this point in time, you know, through today's highs, that thing's rallied, you know, 78, 80 percent. And then you can trail stops up. Um, but remember, there's no uh, very little, if any, protection against a gap down. So you may, you know, use these levels to exit, you know, trade strategically. When I say strategically, you know, if you took it and you got up close to 1222, if that's the actual resistance, you want to sell a little bit below that. Same thing there on that gap. And, um, you know, where it goes from there, if it, you know, if it keeps going, there's not much resistance overhead. The next thing you have is that previous reaction high right there. So just want to do an update on BlackBerry. And then let's see what else. Oh, wrap it up with the marijuana stock. Somebody asked about those the other day. I, I, I can't make a strong case right now. This is MJ, the uh, first to market uh, marijuana ETF. I think there's a couple others that have come out since. Uh, you know, recently pulled back. I haven't touched a single line on this chart. These are all levels I've had here for a long time. This line was created back in 2019. Uh, and it's, you can see, well, since 2019, this is 2021, it continues to act these levels of support and resistance. And that was a recent pullback to support. Uh, do I regret not buying it or highlighting it there? No. Um, case could be made. There was a little downtrend line. And this is this is the common theme. I'll, I'm going to go over some of the individual stocks now. They've recently taken out this trend line. So you could make a case to go long. But And, and quite a few of them had some divergence, uh, positive divergence at that recent low. Um, I'm just not getting a good feel about these. This market is frothy right now. AMC will and GameStop will at some point prove to be the poster child of what's going on in, in this market with, with speculation. Uh, just like the dot-com bubbles and pet.com, pets.com was a poster child of the dot-com era. Um, you know, time time will, will show, you know, a lot of these stocks that are overinflated. And the, the marijuana stocks years ago, you know, before this ETF even came out, it was very bullish showing those as mostly longs and mostly penny stocks. And uh, we've been in and out over the years. But it, like anything else, you guys will notice this if you follow me for a while, I'll engage a sector. And there are days, weeks, sometimes even months where you're getting update after update trade ideas, whether it's long, short, and then I just stop talking about them. And that's lately I haven't talked much about the marijuana stocks because I just don't see a compelling 
uh, much in the charts very compelling. With that being said, uh, as per request from a subscriber, I'm going to go over some of these charts and just show you what a few of them look like. In no particular order, this is a watch list I have for cannabis stocks. TGODF, that's the Green Organic Dutchman Holdings. Um, I've got a you know basing pattern here. You can see it's kind of been holding under this uh, 30 cent level for a while. Broke out, ran up there to that 49, and I might have highlighted that back then as a, as a, a price target, if I recall. We had a divergent low and all that and hit it. We broke out again. So there's your breakout. And um, so the objective long entries, we're at no man's land now, halfway between support and resistance. If we were to pull back that 30-ish level, 31-ish level, that might provide an objective long re-entry or long entry. Um, but if we don't and we continue on up, if you're in this one, uh, that's a pretty good resistance level and would be a first target about 49.53. Uh, again, that one's penny stock. CRON, Kronos Group, again, uh, this is a common theme. A lot of these guys just put in these little divergent lows. And, you know, I wasn't watching at the time. Even if I was, that's one I would have liked it better if it came down to that 668 level. But it, it did hit that previous reaction low in its run since then. And there are your levels. 793 is support. 934 is the next uh, resistance level potential target. And then 1058. Uh, if you're interested, OGI, same story. You know, again, I say this often, it doesn't hold true in every sector or industry, but this one it usually does, and that is um, the old saying, birds of a feather flock together. You know, the last, you know, strong uh, objective long entry was back here uh, on that divergent low, and we've had a nice, you know, had a nice rally from there. All right, let's rifle through the rest of these and wrap the video up. There's CGC Canopy Growth Company. This is a big one. Uh, I've had this level here for a long, long time, 2240. We hit it recently, fell down there. Uh, what I didn't have is a downtrend line right there, which was just taken out. So that's a common theme. A lot of these had either divergence or near, or what I call almost divergence, you know, lower lows in price and almost uh, equal or higher lows in the indicators. A lot of moving averages just overhead. So again, I, I can just say I'm not I'm not engaged in this sector, but a you know, case could be made to jump in these guys and there's your next target, about twenty nine dollars if, if it continues higher. CRBP and again I'm just going through my watch list in no particular order here. Um I don't have a strong opinion there. This one, big level, C B W T F. Uh, pretty big resistance right there. Look at all those levels, and that's about 32.40. That's a penny stock. Little false breakout there, although it did rally quite a bit when it broke out. Recent breakout there. If it can finally get through there with the conviction, 53 or so would be your next target right there. That's a pretty big resistance level. And no, no opinion there. No strong opinion there. That's H E X O H E X O T O means this is the a lot of these, uh, most of these companies are Canadian because it's still legal, you know, at the federal level in the U.S. And so when you see the .to, it just means these are the shares trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And I track them both. That's it. Back to MJ. All right, let's wrap it up here. Get the video out to you guys. And um, if I see anything else, I'll make sure to, to get some follow-up posts out today, either in the comments section below this uh, post for the video or in a new update. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great day.